to the Canadian Women in Ocean Industry Leadership Conference 2023. My name is Kelly and this is the Diversity in the Blue Economy podcast with Gale Force Winds. And I have a wonderful guest here, um, Sonia Shorey, who is with Invest Ottawa. And she ha has been with COIL since the beginning. So I'll let you s introduce yourself and tell us what you're doing with uh, Invest Ottawa. Excellent, so it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Sonia Shorey, Vice President Strategy, Marketing and Communications for Invest Ottawa, which is lead economic development agency in Canada's capital. I'm also a co-founder of SheBoot, the investment readiness boot camp established jointly by Invest Ottawa and the Capital Angel Network. And that's dedicated to helping women founders who are tech and tech enabled get investment ready and secure the capital they require to grow and thrive. And I'm also a World Economic Forum Fellow. So I'm really thrilled to be here. I'm very passionate about enabling and accelerating women in leadership, women founders, entrepreneurs so and investors. Agree. And I know that's directly addressing the goals that COIL has set. Yes, absolutely. And um, how did you get into this position that you are in now with uh, Invest Ottawa and as well all of the different organizations you're involved with? That's such a big question. Yeah. It's, I stumbled into it, quite honestly. I started off in journalism at Carleton University and love tech, so I was very passionate. Ottawa is a global tech hub, so yeah. there was many, many great tech companies, and I had my eyes set on working for Nortel Networks, a company that you would not even know, given your youth, but uh, it was one of the telecommunications giants in its day. Uh, from there, I went into CMC Microsystems, which was dedicated to equipping researchers from coast to coast in universities across the country with the ability to design, make, and test microsystems of every kind, was very passionate about their stories, about the impact that they were achieving, and I actually launched a consulting company in 2008 awesome. that was dedicated to working specifically in tech, entrepreneurship, innovation, and economic development, uh, and certainly had the privilege of working with many different innovators, companies, entrepreneurs, right across the country, actually, and around the world in countries like Israel, uh, the US, uh, India, China, and, and it just sort of evolved that the opportunity emerged uh, back in a city that I love, in Ottawa, yeah. to work with Invest Ottawa, and the opportunity that's been given to me has been immense. I'm very grateful for it, and I think it's an opportunity for us to work together as a community to really build up moonshots and take opportunities to add so much value to our ecosystem, to our economy, to our society, and, and ultimately our environment as well. Triple bottom line win. Yeah, absolutely, and um, so you have been working very hard. You are um, all over the world, <laughs> truly. Um, is there anything going on presently in your life that you are um, super excited about and uh, are invested in? Oh my goodness, there's so many things. I think everything that I have the privilege of doing, I'm very passionate about, very invested in. We just launched the next call for proposals for SheBoot, that investment readiness boot camp for women founders. Awesome. It's our fourth call. I'm thrilled together with my co-founders, Julia Elvidge and Jennifer Francis, uh, to be and entering into year four with NRC IRAP. So they have generously come forward and are helping us to scale this program nationally. This is our second year. I think we've served about 38 companies to date uh, and a number of those founders have secured investment. Our goal, of course, is to help every single founder secure the funding they require to grow and thrive. What's really unique about this program is it addresses two challenges that are absolutely critical to drive that dial and create meaningful, lasting change. We're helping to bring more women into to the investment landscape to make those investments. When we see more women investing, uh, more women get funded. That's a, that's a fact and it's proven. Yeah. And of course, we're looking to build up the pipeline of women founders who are investment ready. And so by addressing both sides of that challenge, I really think that we're moving the dial faster. Our goal, uh, to get every woman funded, we do a pitch competition for about 300,000, and that 300,000 comes from those generous women angels who are taking dollars out of their own pockets to make those investments in the women founders that come through our boot camp each year. But in fact, we've helped to uh, catalyze follow-on investment that exceeds $15 million. That's just the value I'm permitted to share. It's actually higher, but there are, of course, non-disclosure agreements. So just yeah. since 2020, when we launched during the pandemic, we're very excited. We're heartened about that impact. Of course, we have a long way to go. We invite any women founders in this country that are tech and tech enabled, that are seeking funding, that are at that pivotal point where they're ready to go and secure capital, please reach out to us. We are hosting our our next boot camp this fall and we are taking applications right now, sheboot.ca. 
Yeah, awesome. So um, when you say tech and tech en enabled, for those who might not know, um, what exactly does that, um, what's the definition of that? That's a great question. So we wanted to be as far reaching as possible so that we could be all encompassing and very inclusive. Diversity, equity, inclusion is really one of the strong premises that we built Shibut upon and we're thrilled to see an increasingly diverse cohort every single year. Tech and tech enabled, if you have a tech product that spans any one of the sectors from information and communication technology defense, public safety, medical devices, life sciences, clean tech. There's so many exciting sectors where tech plays a key role. Tech enabled means you've taken a non-traditional sector, so something that would not typically be considered pure tech, and married it up with a tech-based opportunity, platform, community of interest, that you're leveraging technology as part of your solution, even if it's not the entire solution. So yeah. that, I think, broadens that scope, and it enables us to serve many more founders than we otherwise would have. We've yeah. also seen at Invest Ottawa, so Invest Ottawa is very passionate about supporting more women founders from every walk of life. I mentioned during our panel that yeah. five years ago we established a subcommittee of our board because it was a core part of our strategic plan. We built that with diversity in mind. These, these champions from industry, academia, investment, uh, and entrepreneurship come together and they provide invaluable guidance and support. They really lean in and they help to catalyze our progress. We built a strategy with metrics and an action plan and step by step and we have a very long way to go on, on every one of these fronts but we overhaul the language that we use the way we market our programs the way we design our programs designing with and not for so with women founders so that they can actually be a part of the process we've secured new funding uh, graciously from Fed of Ontario and the government of Ontario to support some of these endeavors and of course when we look at the metrics and what gets measured gets done uh, we deliver those metrics publicly every single year at the launch of International Women's Week and this is a really special community-based endeavor that we undertake every year we don't just celebrate International Women's Day on the 8th of March we do this work all year long awesome. and in the month of March we shine a very special spotlight on all the partners champions and allies that come together and we create an integrated month of programming events campaigns opportunities with very tangible outcomes that help to catalyze women in leadership current and aspiring women leaders every walk of life in all sectors so that range is not just from entrepreneurship and the investment landscape and economic development but we look at academia the media nonprofits government all of those sectors play a really critical role in our economy and we do it together with our community so we share awesome. these metrics at the beginning of every single International Women's Week and year over year I'm, I'm encouraged I'm excited mm -hmm. by the changes that we're seeing particularly in the earliest stages of the pipeline so where where women founders have an idea they're starting to scale they're starting to gain product market fit demonstrate traction of their product and then they're at that tipping point and ready to scale that's really exciting to me yeah. meaningful change does not happen quickly and of course this change cannot happen fast enough as I mentioned on the stage the UN yeah. the World Economic Forum they're, they're doing assessments right now of how long it will take us to achieve gender parity and those range from anywhere from 165 years to 300 years that's simply unacceptable yeah. If we could inspire more, more jurisdictions, more regions, more cities, more countries around the world to have intention and bring some of these types of initiatives to bear, not exactly the way we've done it. We have certain approaches that we think can be replicated, adapted and adopted to drive critical mass change that will have real impact. COIL is doing that. COIL is doing that in the marine and ocean tech sector where there's a massive economic opportunity and a chance to change our society and certainly bring to bear um, a wealth of, of environmental innovations. I am so proud of Kathy Hogan, the executive director of Oceans Advance. She is an outstanding leader and has really dedicated so much passion, time and energy to driving what's happening today to the strategy that's emerging and it will have dividends for, for generations to come. Yeah, absolutely. And I have been a uh, person who has experienced that firsthand from Kathy and as well yourself you have been um, incredible to the COIL initiative you have helped Kathy immensely and I cannot thank you enough for helping someone that I consider to be my second mom <laughs> she is an outstanding mentor and she has been someone who has given so much and made such an impact on St. John's on Atlantic Canada on the marine and ocean tech sector I just think she is, is deserving of so much and uh, I'm just privileged to have the chance to collaborate with her and with you. Yes, thank you very much and thank you Sonia for having uh, the, taking the 
time out of your busy schedule to oh. chat with me today. And uh, thank you so much for your work um, supporting women, uplifting women, and um, all you do for um, Canada. It's yeah. great. One of the most important goals we collectively pursue. We, I know that you're interviewing me today, but we do it as a community. And I really want to leave that last parting thought. The more people, the more champions and allies, men, women, non-binary individuals working together to drive that dial. It will improve our economy, our society, our environment. It's proven that we have a more competitive economy. Companies are more competitive when there's more diverse leaders at the table. The more women we can get into the C-suite, into decision-making power positions, the stronger we will be as a society and the more competitive we'll be as an economy. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Thank Sonia. You. <laughs>